And welcome back to Iron Sports. The West Indies completed nothing short of a miraculous turnaround uh, from the opening test defeat to host England at, at Edgbaston, where they lost inside three days, to win the second test comfortably in the end by five wickets at Headingley. Barbadians Craig Brathwaite and Shea Hope were the heroes uh, of the victory, but to give an in-depth analysis is Dr. Akshay Man Singh, a chairman of the Cricket West Indies Medical Panel, who caught up with our reporter, Jordan Fort. Take a look. Dr. Man Singh, uh, so the West Indies, um, you know, obviously pulled off a, a historic um, win against England in the, in the second test um, at Headingley yesterday. And I know there's still euphoria among Caribbean fans and so on. Um, but firstly, just tell me what this win, um, because of the way it was done, and because it was done in England for the first time in 17 years, really does for West Indies Test Cricket. I think this win does a lot for West Indies Cricket because it's put back confidence in a team which has been slowly progressing over the last few years, which has been gelling together as a team. It's extremely young, extremely inexperienced, and one that was given no chance of winning anything in England. Um, why I think it's especially important is because in isolation it's a fantastic win. The test match itself, we scored over 700 runs, which has not been done for a very, very long time. The downside is we didn't take 20 wickets. There was a declaration that, that opened the door for us, but we grasped the opportunity and went forward. It was significant because the young batsmen that we were relying on uh, are coming forward slowly. So we're seeing Jermaine Blackwood getting half centuries or close enough. We're seeing Shia Hope, who we have a lot of, of, of faith in for the future, um, coming good. And Craig Brathwaite, who's the most experienced batsman in, in the lineup, also coming good. So you're seeing things gelling there. Uh, we saw a few wickets tumble, and yet Jason Holder in the first innings was able to steady the ship with Jermaine Blackwood and, and, and give a platform. So those are very positive achievements. Um, what made it even more special is the fact that we were steamrolled in the first test. And talk about the two-tier system in test cricket was a, a light in, 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 in the UK. And so the next week, you have West Indies beating England and Bangladesh beating Australia, and suddenly the cat is amongst the pigeons. But to me, the more significant thing has been the progress that we've seen over the last few years. West Indies was a team that was losing in three days in test cricket regularly. We're losing with our stars and without our stars. What they've done is gel together a team. And what we, if you follow the last few years, we've been losing, but matches have been lasting five years, five days, five years, five days. Um, they've been lasting five days, and occasionally we'd win the test match as well. And if you remember the last series we played against Pakistan, having lost the first test, the West Indies won the second test and really should have saved the third test. It was the last ball, literally, that, that they lost off. But the point is that um, five days of cricket was played. So you go to England with that confidence that, hey, we're progressing, we're getting better, and suddenly you get steamrolled and you lose in three days by innings and a lot. And it rattles your confidence. And you go into the second test when nobody believes in, in the ability of the, of the players. And obviously the coaching staff and the players themselves believe that they could perform. So when they win with that, it gives you a sort of a snapshot of where we are, which is we are a progressing team, which is just not consistent. You know, people are arguing with me that the West Indies is, is, is a consistently you know, what, um, moving team. When we used to win, we were consistent. We used to win everything. When we used to lose, we were consistent. We used to lose everything. We're now progressively inconsistent. But the point is there's some progress there, and I think that has been the, the, the hallmark of the performance. I myself have, have admittedly been kind of cynical over the future of Test cricket. Um, with the West Indies being demolished in the first test, I thought that in and of itself also wasn't good for test cricket, it wasn't good for viewership, it wasn't good for bringing fans to the game. What does this, a rebound by the West Indies and now a serious levelling win heading into the final test match at Lords, what does this do for test cricket as a whole? What I can foresee for the third test in, in Lords um, with the series level is West Indian supporters who perhaps would not have gone to the match because they perceived the West Indies as just being a rollover team, actually coming out and, and going to watch some good cricket. So as far as test cricket is concerned, the crowds in England have been good, but granted that was because they wanted to see the English team. Hopefully now we can pull out West Indian supporters, and I'm talking about West Indian supporters, be they Englishmen, be they whatever, or be they West Indians, coming out to the ground to support it. Viewership, I think, will go up because, you know, the West Indies started 
opening the door for victory yesterday. And suddenly people started turning on their TVs and, and, and soaking it in. And the closer we got to victory, the more you heard people talking about it and so on. Everybody has one eye open. They're just looking for that, that good performance. And I think there's a lot of backing there. So it's important for the team to believe in themselves and come back with a strong performance. And it's important for the supporters to feel that they have a product to look at. But the truth is that Test Cricket in England, certainly, has attracted a lot of audience, has done well. That is mirrored in Australia. That's mirrored in other places. And as the quality of the team and the quality of the game improves, I'm sure you'll see people around the world coming back to it. And, and as you said, do you think the Caribbean fans, the ones here, um, the CPL is currently on, running concurrently with this test series, um, do you think most of their attention will be distracted by T20 cricket? Do you think they still have that uh, interest in test cricket? I think as far as CPL is concerned, happily it's played at a totally different time than when the test match is going on. Secondly, it's two different types of cricket and there's no doubt that the youth of the Caribbean are gravitating towards T20. Now the important thing for the West Indies is do we cherish test cricket or not? If we do, then we're going to have to teach the youngsters how to enjoy this game because it is a, it's a different form of the game. And don't look at it as one game being played over five days. Look at it as mini battles being played over two hours. So the first session, the second session, the third session gives you three battles, at the end of which you have a mini war. And the next is the same thing. And as you put them together, the excitement is actually much greater. And if the cricket is exciting, then you get sustained excitement. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't seen the crowds at CPL as big as I've seen them in the past. So obviously there's other factors at play, whether it's back to school, whether it's the fact that you know, the marketing um, is not as strong as it was before, I don't know. But the, the crowds have not turned up for T20 like we've seen in the past. So let's not just take it for granted that T20 is the way of the future. Um, in terms of the West Indies, no. Um, is there a reason to caution Caribbean fans? Because um, I know that, you know, We'll get excited about the team. We'll get excited because you know of the, the Test match win. But really and truly, there are there is a context um, by which you want. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that England declared, which opened the door. Um, we had a couple of performances that were kind of unprecedented. Shea Hope getting a century in both innings at Headingley, never been done before. And um, you know, Shannon Gabriel taking four wickets and Kemar Roach in the first innings, mm -hmm. both taking four wickets. That doesn't seem like necessarily all those ingredients will happen again all in one test match at Lawrence. Well, Should you, we yeah. caution <laughs> you certainly won't see people getting centuries after centuries over and over. Remember, we're five runs shy of having two people getting becoming immortals because Craig Brathwaite was out for 95. Um, but. You mentioned Shannon Gabriel, for example. Shannon Gabriel's four wickets is not uh, something out of the blue. He's been progressively getting large wicket hauls, and he got his first five for earlier this year. So Shannon Gabriel has been progressing as a top-line fast bowler. Kimar Roach did all the hard work for him to go from oblivion back into the team and into taking wickets. So what you're seeing is a lot of hard work paying off there. The batting has to step up. Right? We're still having some problems with some of the other batsmen, but take a Kyle Hope, for example, who I have a lot of, of hope for in the future. Um, getting run out for zero because it ricocheted off of the bowler and so on. You have instances like that. The point is, for those batsmen on form, they've got to continue pro uh, performing as they're in form. In other words, you've got to score as much as you can. For the Blackwoods, who can make it to 40 with ease, they, the coaches have to sit down and explain to them that 40 can be converted to 100. And the others are there for their ability, so they've got to believe in themselves. So the point is, yes, it was a one-off victory. It was a very good victory. Um, there's a, every likelihood that the West Indies could be steamrolled in the third test, but at least they've given us a bit of hope. But if you look at it overall, I think everybody's getting a bit more confidence in the team. And as the team gains in confidence, hopefully the region will as well. Um, what do you make of Jason Holder's captaincy? Because in the England second innings, I think just a bit after T, where they really started to pile on the runs and set a total that they thought they could you know, defeat us with of 322. The game, I think, got away from the West Indies just a touch. Joe Root, Moeen Ali and so on, Chris Wokes towards the end, took the game a bit away from the West Indies. And the drop catches were still plaguing us in that second innings. Um, what do you make of how we feel it and Jason Holder, Jason Holder's captaincy, especially in the second innings, having done so well in the first? Well, I think the first thing that you mentioned, the drop catches, had we taken our catches, 
uh, the match may have been finished a bit earlier. And had England taken their catches, it might have been a different story altogether. And the captain can't be blamed for that. You know, this was, these are straightforward catches that really should have been taken. But it, does play, it takes its toll on captains. And a young captain like Jason Holder, who's always been chasing from behind, literally. I mean, few test matches, you've been ahead. Um, I can see that playing its, you know, playing its part as well on the, on the captain. Because you work hard, especially as a bowler, you work very hard, and then drop, a catch goes down. It's, it's, it's demoralizing. The point is, you know, you, you make decisions, and you've, you've got to stand by those decisions. If they go your way, you're the greatest captain in the world. If they don't go your way, people are going to look back and say, that was the point where things went wrong. Uh, all I can ask is that the judgment is sound, and that you back what you, you've done. And I think, you know, we can always criticize the captaincy of anybody, including Joe Root, for having declared when he declared and so on. The point is the basics of cricket, which is good batting, tick. Good bowling, tick. Good fielding, massive question mark. And that's really what we have to work on. Captaincy, I think, is the least of them. You know, he seems to, well, West Indies and Holder himself seem not to yet know who the go-to spinner should be, um, who that first change spinner should be. Devendra Mishu was brought in as a specialist spinner. Ruston Chase, to my mind, is the, the all-rounder who, you know, who bowls and bats. But Chase obviously was preferred over Mishu in this match. In this match, Chase bowled a number of overs more than Mishu himself. Mm -hmm. Um, is that another one of our issues? Well, that's just a question for the captain, really. I mean, on, the, on paper, as you say, Bishu is the frontline bowler, and one would expect him to, to bowl the frontline bowlers ahead of the part-time bowlers. But it's not the first time we're seeing this. It's not the first series we're seeing this in. It's not the first captain who's, who's done that. So uh, let's just leave it at that. Um, I think common sense would suggest that your frontline bowlers are the ones that you should be bowling first. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned some of the, the batting inadequacies. You mentioned Kyle um, very inexperienced at first class level. He's our number three. Um, Shea obviously is batting well. So when you look down the order, you mentioned Jeremy Black, who is touch and go getting to forties and so on. Um, do you think there's, again, that instability that if Brathwaite goes, Hope goes, all of a sudden, the West Indies batting can turn on its head? Well, I think, you know, when two batsmen score close to what is it, about 500, 600 runs, that would be an obvious conclusion. The point is that Karen Powell is the other opener, who, have, who by incident is the other immortal in the team. Eh? He also has a, a century in each innings. Just not getting off. He shows good promise. He starts with just not getting off. One expects him to, to be able to, to extend that score at some stage. Uh, the number three is very inexperienced. If you remember the last test series, we went with Shimron Hetmeyer, who is also inexperienced. So the truth is, all of our players right now are inexperienced because we've decided not to go with our experienced players. So you're going to have an experience at that level, and you've got to grow into that role. Shai Hope at four, I think, is the right place. Now remember, he was played a lot in terms of where he batted. Started as an opener, didn't do too well, dropped him very low down. I think four is where he's settled, and that's pretty good. Blackwood, it's not lack of ability. It's not lack of, 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 of talent. But somehow, he gets out in the 40s when he just looks so set, and that's something that just needs to be guided. I saw Blackwood, for example, score a century in Antigua. And the person at the other end was Shivnar and Chandapal. And I'm convinced in my own heart that it was Shivnar and Chandapal who got Blackwood to that 100 by just talking to him every over, calming him down, and so on. Now, what it requires is somebody to be able to just send a message to him, just get him. But he, too, is growing, growing in status so I expect, and stature, so I expect him to improve. But um, listen, we have an inexperienced batting lineup and we have inexperienced reserves as well. They're going to take some time to get into the role, but the point is if you have people performing consistently, we just need two batsmen per innings to put a big one on. That's what England did. The point is that two that made runs in the first test made a double century in a big century. Our two didn't make a century put together, right? So it was, it was a, a problem there. We need a batsman who's informed to recognize that he's got to carry on. If he gets 100, that's not enough. You get 150. If you get 150, that's not enough. You get 200. In the past, we used to see West Indian batsmen get to 100 and give it up when other batsmen used to carry on. I'm happy to see this time that the guys get to 100 and they look like they want to carry on even further. Right, so there you heard from a chairman of the Cricket West Indies medical panel, Dr. Akshay Mansingh, speaking about the West Indies' a stunning second test win over England at Headingley. And of course, he was speaking with our reporter, Jordan Fort. Hopefully, the West Indies can carry on to the third test, which of course starts on September 7 at Lords. Right then, we'll take a break and return with more. We'll be talking some football soon come.